Elgato have just released version 6.2 of the Stream Deck software, and it's got an awesome new feature added in that I know certainly for me as somebody who uses the Stream Deck primarily for personal productivity, really. I mean, I bought it as a streaming device, but now uh, I just realized that it is the ultimate productivity tool. So, uh, and there's one feature that they've added in, which I know that a lot of people uh, using it in this way have been asking for. And there's a couple of other nice features as well. So not a major update by any stretch, but uh, definitely worth uh, talking about here. So uh, before that, though, if you have not yet updated your Stream Deck, let me just tell you how you can do that. Uh, if you go into your Stream Deck application, then just head up to the little cog icon just up in the top here, click on that, and then you'll see in the general tab uh, in the preferences that you do have a check for updates button here. Uh, so you just want to make sure you've uh, got 6.2. something. <laughs> so that is the latest version. Incidentally, whenever you do update the software, it's always worth coming back after the update has been completed um, and just go immediately into your devices section and then just go down the list of devices you've got. So however many you've got plugged in, I have five Stream Decks currently and a couple of mobile devices. Um, but when you go through the, the list, go down to each one and just double check the firmware because sometimes a software update can trigger a firmware update to the device. Uh, and I certainly noticed that there was a couple of updates available for the pedal, but maybe that is because uh, one of them was recently added to the setup. So uh, anyway, just go through the uh, list of devices that you have uh, and just check for firmware updates. Incidentally, whereas in the general tab here, um, you will always see the check for updates button. So you can go and check for updates in devices. Uh, there is no check for updates for firmware. Um, but if there is a firmware of update available, you will see a button that says update firmware. So if you don't see that button, then there is no update available. Uh, anyway, so let's get on into the actual updates themselves. And the first one is related to font settings. And obviously, we have been able to change the uh, style of the text. So here you can see a few just sample actions here. And we've got some text on the button. Uh, and you can come down to the little font uh, icon here, or the little T icon, I should say. And you can change things like the position of the text on the screen. You can see how it's actually changing on the button there. Um, and then you can change, obviously, the font font size, bold, italic, under, underline, and so on, and then also the uh, font color. Uh, but obviously, when you've got lots of buttons on here, um, then it can be a task to go through and update them if you want to change the styling. Well, now they've added in a global setting for that. And once again, click on the preferences, uh, and that will open up the little preferences window. And now you can see we've got this uh, tab here, a new tab, which is called style. Uh, clicking on style, you'll see that we've now got global font settings. And so you can change all of those same things. So if I want to change the font to something different, different and then change the size, uh, maybe change the color um, and then just click on apply. Uh, you'll notice that all of these buttons now have this new style applied to them that I've just created in here, all except one, which is this one. And that's because I basically overrid the uh, the setting there um, by going in and changing it manually. So that means that you can still have you know, a separation if you want to have a general setting for most of the uh, the buttons, but then maybe you want something specific on a particular button, you can always come into a specific button and change the styling on that one completely separately to uh, any of the others. So here you can see we've got that different styling. Once again, coming back into here, if I was to change this color now to a different color, click on OK um, and then apply. Then you can see how it's just applied to those ones that didn't have a custom uh, setting on them. You can always revert, by the way, as well. So coming into this one that I've changed, uh, I can always click this button here, which will revert to the, uh, the new global setting. Uh, same with this one. Uh, so if I click on this button, click the little T icon there, and then click revert, um, it's now going to put that at the global setting. So now these are all basically being controlled by that global setting. There's a couple of other things in here as well, though, if I open up those settings again. Um, so first of all, right up at the top here, you've also got this one which says multi-action uh, show progress overlay. Uh, what that is, is related to the actual buttons themselves. You won't see it on the, on the, uh, in the app, but when I press one of these, which is a multi-action, you'll see that there's a little sort of check mark that appears on the screen, which shows the progress of the multi-action. And when the multi-action is complete, it disappears off the screen. So that is something that is now optional. It always appeared before, uh, but now you can choose to take that off. So if you ch ch uncheck show progress overlay, then when you press the button, there'll be no little check mark that appears on the screen. 
So uh, whether you want that or not, you now have the uh, the, uh, the option for it. Uh, you've also got here um, dials. So you'll see dials. This is re re relating specifically um, to the Stream Deck Plus. So the Stream Deck Plus being the uh, eight key plus the uh, dials uh, version of the Stream Deck. Um, and uh, now you can update the, uh, the style of the text on the screen uh, separately to the style of the button there as well. So here you can see we've got volume and we can change the, uh, the color of that. Um, and click on OK. Um, so now we've got uh, a different, oh, I need to apply that as well. Um, now we've got a different style of the, uh, the, the, the text on there. You can't actually change the size of that independently. That is just limited to be that size. Um, and then also you can choose whether even you want that to appear or not. So maybe you just want the, uh, the icons themselves uh, rather than the text. So clicking apply would get rid of that uh, text. Um, although on the Stream Deck buttons, I tend not to use text at all. I prefer to just have, you know, nice pictograms that uh, relate to whatever it is. So I design my own icons. I've got a number of those available on my store, which uh, you can find a link to in the description as well. Um, but, uh, but for the actual dials, I do find that useful because usually they contain a little bit more information. So if I put the titles back on there and uh, just reset this to white for the time being, uh, click on apply. Uh, I use the dials on the Stream Deck Plus for things like Ecamm Live, uh, which is what I'm using to make this video. Uh, and I want to actually see what I'm looking at because um, there is a feature of the dials where you can have what they call dial stacks, which means that uh, when you push the button in, push the dial in, it will actually switch through um, different functions that are being controlled by that button. So as you can see here, I'm looking at my uh, mic level in Ecamm Live, uh, but if I click on this button here, that actually changes to be the movie level in Ecamm Live, click it again, and then it is the system level, click it again, and it is the effects level. So these are all related to Ecamm, which is the software that I'm using to make this video. Uh, and then also for interview mode in Ecamm Live that I use for recording the podcast, I can switch through different guest uh, audio levels. So for me, having those titles on there is really useful uh, because I want to be able to see exactly what that button is controlling. Because if I didn't have the title, um, then as you can see, the actual little pictograms underneath it are all exactly the same. So there'd be no way of me knowing uh, which was which. Now, incidentally, this sort of brings me on to these little button icons that I've got in the background there. Uh, because what I found was, uh, whilst I like the fact that if I just swipe over here, uh, you can add, you know, a different background to this screen. So this is a little touch screen here and you can add a different background to it. Um, when you then add in your buttons, depending on how they're looking, um, sometimes it was difficult to see uh, the text or see the, the pictogram that was being used. And so I wanted to have something that was give, gonna give a bit more contrast um, to each of those buttons. Um, and so that's what I did. I created these little sort of, as you can see, little sorts of sort of blank button icons that then everything goes over the top of. Um, and it's easy to add those into any action. Uh, so all you do is just click on here. And in the same way that you can update the icon of a regular button in here, you can also uh, go to either set from file or actually the best way to do this I found was do create new background and then you drag and drop the image there. So what I've done is I've actually made these buttons available for free. So if you would like to add this kind of thing to your Stream Deck, um, I've got a collection of over 60 of uh, varying different colors, uh, basically to hopefully appeal to everybody's uh, taste. Uh, so there's a series of just different colored icons here, and I can now drag and drop any one of those into my uh, Stream Deck Plus. And if I come back over to the Stream Deck Plus, uh, you'll see how this works. Click on Apply. Uh, and now we've got this sort of more contrasting background that I think works better um, for that. So I've left a link to this down in the description, but it's basically over on the Take One Tech store. Um, so if you go to there and scroll down, you'll see my other Stream Deck icon packs as well. Um, and there is a cost associated with those. But if you look down here, the Stream Deck Plus, uh, this is just a free icon pack. So if you want to add those buttons to your Stream Deck Plus to make things stand out a little bit more, uh, then go and check that out. As I say, link is in the description. Um, so apart from the font section uh, settings then, uh, that pretty much covers off that global uh, settings tab that we've now got in the preferences. Um, the other thing that has been added in is something called uh, link action state titles, <laughs> which may have not been uh, immediately obvious as to uh, what it does to you uh, or does for you. Um, and uh, what that is, is when you have got an action on the Stream Deck, uh, there is for most of them, just a single um, 
space that you can add a single uh, graphic for your button and then also a single title in here. But there are some things where you have basically two different states for the button. One of those would be in Ecamm Live. If I go to here and run a scene, um, basically this one, it will show me when the scene is active versus when it's not. So when I switch to a, uh, a different scene, for example, like this, uh, then the button will change state that, uh, as to in terms of what it's showing on the, uh, the screen there. Um, and down here, uh, you'll see then that you do have this these two little radio buttons here that you can switch from one to the next to show um, the sort of changing of the icon and you can update an icon for this one and then update for the other state as well uh, but you've also got then this title uh, and previously the title was uh, basically two different options you could have a title for one state versus a title for another state and you still can do that uh, but if I go to here and I'll just in fact what I'll do is I'll change to an easy one to show this on, which might be a, uh, a hotkey switch. So let's just use the basic hotkey switch function that you've got on Stream Deck. So maybe you've, there's a hotkey to turn something on and a hotkey to turn the thing off again. And here you can just click to assign those two hotkeys. So let me say that this is just called switch for example, just randomly. Uh, there you can see it says switch. You'll also see that it's adopted that uh, global font uh, styling as well. Um, but now if I switch to the other button, um, it still says switch. And this is because they've now added in this little link icon here, which connects the two states. However, if you do want to break this and uh, have those two titles changing independently of each other, um, you can just click on the little link icon there. And then what I might want to have is maybe this is saying that it's on. Uh, and then if I click over to this one, uh, maybe this one says that it is off if I can spell a three letter word. <laughs> so now you can see that when I switch back and forth between those, and indeed when I press the button on my Stream Deck, um, then it is gonna be switching uh, backwards and forwards between those two different titles. But once again, if you want to link those, you can just always click the little link button and then it will remain the same whichever state it's on. So that's just really that uh, link action state title <laughs> in the update list um, is just that basically. Now there were a couple of other fixes um, that came in with the uh, with the the update as well. Uh, so I'll just mention some of those because one of them specifically did apply to me, um, and that was the um, uh, update which or the change which resolved um, a bug where updating a plugin would lead to uh, basically a little question mark appearing on some of your actions. And certainly I found that with people I was on consultation calls with that they'd had um, an update or something. And so they'd wondered why all their buttons had changed to little question marks. And so uh, that it seems has been uh, fixed. So if that did affect you, um, then uh, then certainly that one has been, uh, has been fixed. So it's worth just double checking and updating your uh, plugins once again. Uh, so there were a few other fixes in there. Uh, it's all in the release notes, nothing uh, sort of major um, in that respect as well. Uh, there is another one, though, that they uh, mentioned, which doesn't appear to be necessarily Mac specific. Um, and that is the fact that open uh, now applies to folders or rather it, there is a little action for it and so maybe I should just explain that a little bit more uh, because it's not actually a new feature it's just a slightly new implementation uh, but previously if you go into the system menu uh, and drag in the open command here um, and it says app and file so it says it can open an app and file it's always been able to open folders so if you go to the uh, little navigation thing here click on that it will just bring up your uh, your Finder or Explorer window, whether you're Mac or PC. And then you can select a file, a folder, um, or an application to either open an application, open a file, and obviously it will open the relevant application for that. Or opening a folder would open up the Finder on Mac or uh, or. Windows Explorer, whatever they call it these days, um, on the uh, on the PC. So what the update said was um, that there was now a, a specific folder action in there. Uh, and this is what it says in the release notes. You'll see that now next to where it says sort of presentation in that little clip, um, then uh, there is uh, not just a little file icon, but there is also a little folder icon. However, I noticed that that wasn't actually present on the, uh, the Mac update. So maybe that is just a Windows specific thing. Um, but just know that you've always been able to do that and you can still do it um, just by clicking on here if you're on a Mac uh, click on the little file icon there and then go and select the folder that you want to uh, to open uh, this kind of brings me on to uh, another related function because this is all about the open command 
the big one that I want to talk about is the close command. And it is such a simple thing. Um, but I'm a big proponent of using the uh, Stream Deck as basically, as I say, the ultimate productivity tool. And I use it for setting up like, you know, entire workflows uh, or work states, I should say. So when I'm getting ready to do something like filming this video, or maybe it's, you know, working on some other aspect of business, um, then I want it to basically be able to just press a button and it will just open up all of these different things that I'm going to work on. Uh, I then link it in with other software like Moom and keyboard maestro to position windows on the screen and do all sorts of other automation as well. Um, but uh, having the uh, multi-action on a Stream Deck be the thing that is triggering all of these different things and specifically opening a lot of applications. So just in case you weren't aware um, that on the Stream Deck, you can create uh, multi-actions. So if I come into here, uh, right click on this particular thing, uh, just cancel this out, uh, right click on here and go to create multi-action. Um, then it creates this space here where I can essentially open a whole load of different applications. So I could drag this on here, keep dragging these on. Uh, maybe this one might be to open, you know, one app. Uh, let's say this is going to open whatever it is, a browser. Uh, I'm not going to go through and select all the apps. This one might be to open, you know, another app, maybe my uh, Excel file or Excel or something like that. This one could be to open a file, you know, a specific file. Uh, you can have it basically open a whole series of different things up for you um, and do other things, you know, trigger, do not disturb or whatever it happens to be um, for from using keyboard shortcuts. And you basically you can build up like a whole sequence of events in here that is just one single multi-action. So you press one button and it magically does all of this stuff. So it's great. Uh, however, the one lacking function that it's had up until now is, yeah, you can open all this stuff, but what do you do when you want to finish? Or what do you do if you're switching from one state to another? Um, you have to go through and uh, annoyingly go and click close on so many different things. <laughs> so now they've resolved that because as well as having an open action, we have now got a close action. Uh, and it's just below the open, obviously. Uh, click click on close. Uh, so you might want it to be for live streaming, for example, I might want it to close down things that I think are going to be, you know, using up bandwidth or uh, things like that. Uh, so there is now this close function here, it works exactly the same way. Uh, you can just come to here and click on the little uh, icon here to select a file, a folder or a an application and have it close down those apps. One thing to note, though, is that if you are closing down apps um, that have maybe got unsaved work, uh, it will trigger you to save the work. Uh, so there is <laughs> there is a very dangerous workaround to that, which is force quit. So you can have it literally just force quit certain applications. I'd be very wary of using that just from you know the, the, the case that I've just said there, which is that, yeah, if you've got any unsaved work and you force quit, then uh, then it's gone. So you have to be very careful about uh, making sure that you are you are saved. But apart from that, uh, I think that this is a great little addition. And as I say, I know that a lot of people who are using the Stream Deck, uh, you know, largely for productivity like I am, um, this is going to just add to this ability to, uh, you know, switch between one work frame and, uh, and another. Now, this is something that I've talked about at length on my channel before, but just recently I talked about how I'm using all five of these Stream Decks that I've got on my desk at the moment. Well, three on the desk, two on the floor technically. Um, and I talked all about that in a recent live stream. And you can find that video uh, over here on the right side and I talk all about how I'm using them for productivity specifically.